Hi all, Mass Barncup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we're taking a look at this AC Bell server power supply. Now this is a OEM model power supply made for IBM. The product part number of this is the FSA021 and it is a 450 watt 12 volt DC power supply. So let's take a look at the connector here and get it to run. This 450 watt power supply or 460 actually says here we have a AC DC and a warning LED now uh, we can see we actually have a voltage regulator 200 201 and 203 sitting here at the side quite interesting what we can do with those and at the front we actually have two programming headers so most likely a uh, dual controller power supply one for PFC and one for the output power supply as well. To reverse and engineer and hack this power supply, what I'm going to use is a one kilo ohm resistor, two pieces of wire, some pointy um, multimeter uh, probes here, which I can fasten the one kilo ohm resistor to, a multimeter for checking uh, continuity and also to measure the voltage when we're trying to make it run, and a piece of paper to write down the pin layout. So all these are chassis grounded, which means that we can identify the grounds as the first thing. For that, we just use continuity on our multimeter and we can simply just begin probing them out up against the chassis. Okay, pin one, ground. Because there is no reason to try to bridge between different grounds. And we have a ground on 8 as well. And what about that one? Nothing. Then we'll try the back side. Okay, so that's our minus and we have plus on the other side. And we start again out here with pin 9. Okay. So pin 10 and 11 is grounds as well. Or 10 or 12. All right, so at least we know that this is not going to do any good bridging between them. So the next step is to hook up a resistor, put some power on the power supply, and then try to find the jumper that has to be made in order for it to run. Now the reason that we use a 1 kilo ohm resistor is that if I do short circuit something here, the short circuit current is limited by the resistance of this. So usually you can just use a bridge to make them run, but this is just for safety. Before powering it up, let's just check out the insides. Pretty high quality build. Have a good nice um, input filter option here. We have the fan, input inductor, uh, a British rectifier, we have one single switch here, we have a large DC bolt capacitance, output diodes, and then we have our transformers and output chokes as well, and a single diode here at the end. All capacitors look fine, so I assume this is good to run. So let's try it out. We are ready to hook it up to 230 volt AC, so let's do that. And right now it is lighting up the AC LED, no warning light and no DC light. So I'll just want to start out with the ground and then pulling all the upper pins to that. We got a multimeter here to check if we get a DC output. So I'll just put that on the ground and we'll try on pin two. Okay, so that was almost too easy. <laughs> so you have to bridge between pin 1 and 2. The fan does go a bit up and down in, um, in level, as we can hear. So it will be interesting to see what happens once you put on some load. So that was how you made this power supply run. You put a bridge between pin 1 and 2. Let us see what we can do with the voltage regulating potentiometers here at the side. So 
So let's just start with the VR200. That does not change much. Okay, here we can lower the voltage. So we can get it up to 12.7. Oh, looks like I uh, fiddled with some kind of feedback there. And it went into a warning mode on the uh, LED, status LEDs. Probably have to turn it a bit, a bit down again. Yeah, might have to power cycle it to get it to run again. Okay, so we're back at uh, 12 volt. So yeah, we can uh, adjust the voltage at VR 201 and 203 is a shutdown limit. So uh, we have to power cycle it, at least if we get into the warning. So that was the voltage regulating potentiometers.